If you masturbate a lot between the age of 20 to 29, you increase your prostate cancer risk by 79%. If you continue to do so until you are 39, you will still increase it by 69%. I bet you are shocked right now. You have all reason to be. But what if I told you this risk turns around in midlife? When you make masturbation your hobby then, look what happens. You masturbate 21 times or more per month and your prostate cancer risk drops by 33%. Some studies even talk about 58%. How on earth is that possible? You know what? There is a surprising explanation. It has to do with study interpretation. In this video, I not only will solve the puzzle, but you will also learn how to approach scientific studies. Sounds great? Then follow me through the swamp of medical data. I'm your guide, Dr. Stefan Bundrock, board certified urologist and specialist in sexual health. Let me put one thing straight right from the start. As I pointed out in part one of this video, we have all reason to believe that masturbation has a protective effect from prostate cancer. We know this from large scale data of high quality. I won't repeat that here, just watch part one when this video ends. The reason is simple. By the way, do you know what the prostate is good for? I get this question all the time from my patients. Maybe I should tell you too. The prostate produces the ejaculate along with the seminal vesicles. Many of my patients are very surprised when I tell them. They thought it was the testicles. Nope, the testicles just provide the sperm cells. It's the prostate that creates the actual juice. What is prostate fluid for? It enables fertilization. There are lots of enzymes, nutrition for sperm cells, etc. inside. Ejaculate is not water. It is a biological weapon. Well, of course, it's not some kind of nitro. All I want is to illustrate that it has some very advanced biological properties. Properties that make you want to empty your prostate on a regular basis. What's actually happening when prostatic fluid stays too long inside? Could this buildup be an open path to prostate cancer? There's a widely discussed explanation. It's the so-called prostate stagnation hypothesis. It's a simple idea. Here's an analogy. Stagnant water can grow bacteria and cause decay. Stagnant prosthetic fluid could start a chain reaction that leads to bigger health problems down the road. And prostate cancer is just one of them. So here's your safety switch to prostate health. Regular masturbation, ejaculate out, prostate healthy. It's a hypothesis, not a proven fact. You don't want to leave dirty water sitting in a pipe for years either, do you? But if we assume this hypothesis to be true, then one simple question arises. The question is, are you a subscriber to Euro channel? Because if you're not, you might miss out on important information like this that's hard to find elsewhere on YouTube. And I am doing my best to blow your mind with each episode. So give me some digital applause as you would clap your hands in real life. Digital applause means liking and subscribing. It's totally for free and it gets me one step closer to my ultimate goal. World domination. <laughs> Just kidding. Or am I? Okay, let's get serious again. Simple question. If flushing out the prostate is good for older men, why should it be dangerous for young men? And who said it was? Actually, it was one case control study in the British Journal of Urology International in 2008. It looked at 431 men with prostate cancer and 409 controls. A so-called case control study has a specific design. It is totally legitimate to set up a study like this and many trials have that design. You have a case group, 431 men with prostate cancer that is, and you have a control group with healthy men. This control group is designed to match the case group by several predefined parameters. It's almost like searching a healthy twin for every case. However, there are some limitations you have to know about. For example, case control studies look back in time. We call this retrospective. It's not bad to do so, but you have to know that looking into the future is of higher scientific quality. 
So a prospective trial ranks higher than a retrospective one. On a general level, all scientific studies have their limitations. Case control studies rank below randomized controlled trials in quality. In this particular case, not the cause is established, but an association. This is very important for the interpretation of the 79% risk. This is why I said, don't worry in the beginning. But even in high quality studies, there are outcomes that make you scratch your head. In this case, it is about an elevated prostate cancer risk in young men. What I am going to say now is key, so pay attention please. If you read something that's puzzling, you go for a four-step approach. Step one is to get a copy of that study and read it yourself. Include the fine print. Only if you read it yourself, you will get an unfiltered impression. Step two. What was the research question? Was this study designed for that specific outcome? If not, this result could be an invalid finding because of methodological flaws. In this case, a separate study will be needed to clarify whether this was a one-time coincidental finding or not. Step 3. You need a solid background in the field the study is in. This will enable you to know the typical questions and problems that always come up. It will enable you to really penetrate the depth of that trial. And finally, step four, use your imagination. If you think a finding is problematic, then find an explanation. What could have possibly caused this? For this, you need analytical skills, a broad knowledge base, and a lot of imagination. Now, let's put that into practice in our study. If we look into the methods of that study, we will find that sexual activity was included besides masturbation. That's a crucial point. It means exchange of bodily fluids with another person. It introduces an uncontrollable variable. We can control masturbation, but we cannot control what another person might add to the results. The next step is a solid background. So what could another person possibly bring to the table? The answer is simple viruses and bacteria. Many of them are highly specialized. They spread by sexual means. We call them STI, sexually transmitted infections. But we need more knowledge. Did you know that viruses can cause cancer? A virus that causes cancer is called an oncovirus. We have known about them for a long time now, but still we are just scratching the surface knowledge-wise. What we do know is this. The human papillomavirus family has some nasty members. They cause cervical cancer in women, and they are one of the main causes of throat cancer. They also cause penile cancer in men. But for some reason, this form of cancer is not very common in Western countries. Is HPV easy to get? The shocking truth? Yes. Within two years after sexual debut, 80% of the people have had contact. Infections are asymptomatic. Well, sometimes you can get genital warts, but as a rule, you wouldn't know if you were infected. The body is able to clear the infection within two years. In most cases, but not in all. This is why cancer by HPV is a real threat indeed. Now it's about time for some imagination. Young people usually have more sex with shifting partners than older people. That opens an opportunity for STIs. HPV may cause cancer and HPV is everywhere. What if I told you that the very same virus that causes cervical and throat cancer is also silently lurking in your prostate waiting for an opportunity to strike? The shocking truth is HPV is all around us and we need to start taking it more seriously. Let's get real here. We're talking about a virus that has already caused millions of deaths worldwide. A virus that has quietly infiltrated many of our bodies and now potentially affects our prostate health. If we don't recognize its threat, we might be blind to the next big health crisis on the horizon. So the question is, can HPV cause prostate cancer? Believe it or not, I'm not the only one asking this question. In a 2023 Nature paper, researchers found HPV DNA in 25.8% of prostate cancer tissues. In case you didn't know, 
Nature is one of the top journals in the world. You can build a successful academic career at an elite research institution on just one publication in Nature. In other words, the finding I mentioned is not a trivial one, but that wasn't the only publication of its kind. Other studies reported even higher numbers. One particularly disturbing finding, HPV was already present before the cancer formed. High-risk HPV types, especially HPV-16, produce proteins that damage our cells' tumor suppression systems. Imagine a fire alarm system that has been disabled while the fire spreads. That's what HPV does to your body's defenses. It disables your tumor suppressing systems and leaves the path open for cancer to grow. Back to the beginning. 79% increased risk of prostate cancer acquired at young age? Not so far-fetched if you think HPV and STIs. They are not accounted for in that study and the authors of that study even acknowledge that. Is this a proven fact? No, it's a theory. This theory isn't just a fun idea, it's a possible key to understanding what's going wrong with prostate health. Prostate cancer raises its ugly head from mid-age, but the foundation is laid much earlier, possibly during the 20s and 30s. So it's about the lifetime risk you acquire early in life. If we ignore this hypothesis, we might be missing out on a crucial piece of the puzzle. But even if it is somewhat theoretical, you can't come around a fact. There was HPV in those prostates. Can you protect yourselves from HPV? Yes, you can. There is one effective way of doing it. I won't reveal it here. Write your guess into the comments and I will have a look at it. So what is the message after all? Masturbation protects from prostate cancer. Help me spread this knowledge by subscribing and liking. You're not just supporting me, you're supporting the future of health education for everyone. After having watched this video, you may be curious about part one. Here it is. Post your comments below because I am here to help. I'm your guide. I know the way. Follow me.